Could Ryan Paling's return to the Canadian spell trouble for Jesperi Kotkaniemi? That and more in this week's edition of Hockey Inside Out. Welcome to Hockey Inside Out. My name is Adam Susser and I'm coming to you this week from Madison's New York Grill and Bar in downtown Montreal on Drummond Street. The one right across the street from the Bell Centre, your home away from home for Canadians road games. Today on the show, it's the same people who show up every week. We have <laughs> Stu Cowan from the Montreal Gazette, CBC Daybreak's Jessica Resnack, and Chris Nyland. Ever since Ryan Paling made his unbelievable NHL debut during the final game of last season, scoring a hat-trick and game-winning shootout goal, Fans have been clamoring to see what a return of Paling would mean for the Canadians. Well, that finally happened when Paling made his season debut on Tuesday night against Boston. If Ryan Paling plays well, does that mean Jesperi Kotkaniemi could be headed to Laval? He could be. Uh, who knows what their plans are? Uh, you know, apparently the groin injury uh, kept this kid out of the lineup. Um, it may, that groin injury may, and Paling being here may give them the green light to send him to Laval to get some conditioning, if you will. Uh, but we'll see. And it depends on how Paling plays. Uh, not a bad game last night for his first game. Well, second game in the NHL. But, um, you know, there are a few things during the game that he could probably clean up. But it's going to a, a big adjustment to step up from the AHL to the NHL. The quickness, the speed of the game is uh, a lot different and uh, he didn't do too bad last night. Yeah, well, Kakanyemi took part in the optional morning skate Tuesday and he looked good, like he looked fine. You wouldn't know there was anything wrong with him. So I'm sure that maybe there was a little bit of a groin problem that was there, but it might have also been a chance for the Canadians to just let him step aside for a little while, sort of watch the game, relax, take some pressure off him and then come back. I think that they're going to keep both of them when the time comes. I'd be, I think they might, they've been carrying two extra defensemen and one extra forward now. I think that might change. I think Christian Follin might be a guy you could see put on waivers or something and they keep the two extra forwards and one extra defense as opposed to what they were doing so far. But I, I, I mean, the, there's a lot of young talent on this team now yeah. and the future looks bright for this team. And Kutkanyemi showed last year that he can play in the NHL. I don't know if sending him down to Laval really accomplishes anything at this point. I think he can work out whatever his issues are playing here with the Canadians. Well, I think if Mark Bergevin's message to start the season is the children are the future, then you have to let Cockneyemi and Ryan Paling play at the NHL the level. The children. The children <laughs> are the future. So you have to stick with that and give them time. Yes, Cockneyemi has sort of an up and down season, but you need to be patient with him. Put him back into the lineup. Let his confidence stay. And as you mentioned, what would be the point of keeping Christian Follin up here and having Cockneyemi down with the Laval Rocket? Put him on waivers. I don't know if another team would pick him up, but if they do, it's not a huge loss there. But you have to go with the young players and give them the opportunity to play in the NHL and get that experience and grow from it. And Knuckles, as you said, Kakinyama, if he went down, could have a target on him too, right? Playing yeah, in the NHL yeah, as a I young believe kid. that. Yeah. You know, again, a young kid like that, superstar, maybe in the future, uh, coming down, the projection of him being a superstar in the NHL, uh, he could be a target. I mean, you know, there's guys that spend quite a few years in the American Hockey League and they see a young hotshot come down they want to get a piece of him. <laughs> He's one of my favorite players on the team. I project a franchise player in the future when he grows up. Uh, the Canadians beat the Bruins 5-4 on Tuesday night. Can you see them winning a series if they were to meet them in the playoffs against the Bruins? Anything's possible. I mean, the thing is they beat them Tuesday night and Carey Price wasn't very good. <laughs> I mean, Carey Price did not play like a $10.5 million goalie and they still won the game. So if Carey Price plays like Carey Price in a playoff series, anything's possible. It's obvious the Bruins have more talent. That number one line is awesome. But the job that the Danone line did shutting them down Tuesday night was really impressive. I mean, Bergeron's line was minus two. The only goal they got was Pasternak on the power play. So the Canes have shown that they can play, that their number one line can play against that number one line. And then again, if Carey Price plays like Carey Price can, anything's possible. From an entertainment factor, I think the city really needs a Montreal-Boston oh, yeah, yeah. playoff series going on, and anything can happen. We've seen it in the past that Boston has come in as a favorite in the playoffs, and the Canadians were able to, uh, to to win that playoff series. So it could really be the toss of a coin here. But the thing with yesterday's game that kind of upset me with Carey Price not playing well, he did not come out and speak to the media after the game. And if you're the, one of the top goaltenders in the league and you're the top player on this team, you need to come out even when nights are bad. That 
not just when things go well for you to come out and face the media, but when things are not going so well, to come out and say, you know what, I didn't play my best tonight, but thank, thankful I'm uh, to my teammates who were able to score the goals and be able to get the win for us. He's also thankful Tuka Ras didn't play very well yes. either. <laughs> Jess is angry. I'm angry. <laughs> she didn't get her sound clip last night. <laughs> Carrie Price. And it was a 7.30 that is start. Bad. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, I just look at um, this team. Look, they beat St. Louis a couple times, right? Mm -hmm. uh, they won in Arizona, not an easy yeah. play. They beat, Vegas. they beat some very good teams. So, sure they can. In a seven-game series, I think the size may catch up to them. And certainly you need a hot goaltender. I look at last night, Price wasn't very good. But how many te times has this team stunk and Kerry Price won them hockey games? Mm -hmm. So, uh, it was <coughs> nice to see that flipped around for a change. Um, you know, that offsides, the questionable offsides uh, last night. Did he have possession? Did he not? He definitely preceded the puck in the zone, but did he have possession? Uh, it was a gift uh, for the Canadians, no question about it. And, you know, Price certainly, um, yeah, I guess if, I, I, I never had a problem talking to the media. Uh, win, lose, stink, get kicked out of the game, <laughs> whatever. But I can certainly understand how guys may not want to. And he isn't the captain, so he yeah. doesn't have to talk to you. Well, I know, you but we're so size. friendly. You mentioned <laughs> size, though. I think I wrote Claude Julien, I thought, was the first star of that game for the offside challenge, which he called. And also the fact that he put Weber and Sherratt together yeah. to play against that Bruins number one line. And Sherratt had not played well this season, but he looked really good playing with Shea Weber, yeah, well. helping shut that team down. So I think that was a good move. And also, Mete and Petrie looked really good together, too. Two skating defensemen who can move the puck. Price has been kind of having a rocky start so far this season. Any idea what's going on with him there? Hopefully it's not <laughs> chronic fatigue or whatever it was a couple of years ago. But, uh, I mean, I've said and I've written this before. I think Carey Price is at the stage in his career where he can be Carey Price, but not for, like, the year he won the vet. It's going to be like this a little bit with Carey Price. I think he's just, I don't think he can be that consistent goalie all season long that he was when he won the Vezina. He showed that he could at the end of last season for that 24-game run down the end, but I think there's going to be some peaks and valleys with Price moving forward. Maybe he's saving it. Uh, rookie defenseman Kale Fleury was one of the bright spots in the preseason. <coughs> 15 games into the regular season, do you think he's proved that he has what it takes to be an NHL defenseman? Yeah, listen, it's going to take time with him. You know, uh, he certainly can play that physical game. Uh, I think at times he gets a little lost in his own end. And, you know, talking about Price, being Kerry Price, He's going to make saves here and there, but this team um, scoring goals, if you look, they can score goals, but they also give up a lot. I mean, we can all blame it on the goalie, but if you look at the coverage a lot of time on the goals, there's a lot of blown coverage. There's a lot of guys staring at pucks, and um, when you have a team with holes like that defensively in your own end, there's times they look great in their own end. Then other times, man, um, Guys are wide open, guys miss coverage, guys on the weak side. Um, I don't, it might seem like I'm picking on a guy, but Mike Riley, I don't know what he's doing out there. He's a watcher. He watches in the defensive zone. It's just like, I, I, I scratch my head. But anyway. The thing I like with Flurry, when you see him, he's not that big, he doesn't look that big, but man, can he hit. Yeah. Like when he hits, guys go flying, they bounce off him. He brings a, a, another physical element to a team that's not really that big. He's not big, but like so many of the smaller guys, I'm not saying he's small, but sort of the smaller guys like Gallagher and Domi, they play much bigger he's than tall they are. And, lean. and he hits when he hits, he hits hard. And he seems to be getting more comfortable game after game. I, Claude made him a healthy scratch there for a little while. I think that might have helped him also. Big giveaway last night. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, big giveaway. Yeah. And, and that's another thing with Paling on that play, he could have came a little deeper. You know, he was a little too high of the sentiment. You have to support the defenseman there, and it's not always like curling at the blue line. You've got to come back deep and want the puck. And, um, you know, you can blame it all on the kid in the giveaway, but uh, this was an availability problem there also. Well, Paley's got a couple of good guys to learn from, and Nate Thompson and uh, Philip Dano when it comes to coming back and helping out on their own end. I think with Kale Fleury, it's just going to take some time. That uh, he's not going to come here and have a huge impact with the Canadians, but it's going to he's going to slowly grow into the role and, and learn how to be an NHL defenseman. We saw that with Victor Mete, his first year into the league, and now he's becoming more and more comfortable and one of the guys that we're relying on. And I think that's what it's going to be this season. That he's not going to all of a sudden be you know on the top pairing, but he's going. To
going to slowly get more comfortable, and maybe in the future he'll be a regular guy that's uh, going to be, uh, you know, wait on to uh, take care of some uh, big minutes on the ice. But it's more that youth movement or the children, as children you put it. Children are the future. There was like four or five guys in the Canadiens lineup that weren't born when Zidane Ochara played his first <laughs> NHL game. So again, there's there's a lot of young guys coming up, and 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 they're winning with the young guys. Like they're still. They're competitive now, and they'll only get better moving forward, I think. Yeah, it's going to be exciting to see what this team looks like in three years from now. The first half of this show has been brought to you by Madison's New York Grill and Bar in downtown Montreal on Drummond Street, across the street from the Bell Centre. They do holiday parties and corporate events. Okay, uh, Chris mentioned, talked a little bit about Mike Riley. What are your thoughts on him? Do you think he's gained Claude Julia's confidence because he's playing an awful lot? I don't know. <laughs> um, certainly last night... There were a few gaffes standing around watching. Uh, Weber, after the penalty, is changing. He's changing for a winger. Riley jumps on. There's three defensemen on the ice. He doesn't know where to go. Um, I, I don't know why Kulak is out of the lineup. I'd much rather see Kulak in the lineup than Riley. Uh, again, it might seem like I'm picking on him, and I am, <laughs> because <laughs> I, I, I worry about this guy on the ice. This team, with him on the ice, uh, it, it, he's been a liability. The thing with Kulak, he has struggled a bit with the puck, which is what Claude said when he sat him up, but he's a, bat he's a battler. He, he battles and lands the boards. He, he's physical. He hits. And I worry that the longer they leave him out of the lineup, the more he might be thinking more when he has the puck and more nervous and maybe make more mistakes. I think they got to get Kulak back in the lineup, maybe sit Riley again for a little while. Because Kulak, I, just, I think he showed last season over an extended period that he can compete, he battles, he fights along the wall, he, he wins puck battles, and uh, I think they need that right now on this team. I think they put a lot of onus on this kid early in the year, putting him with Flurry. Mm -hmm. Like a, a young kid who's going to play his first full NHL season, you put him with a raw rookie like yep. that, I think they put a little heat on him, and it didn't help him. Um, I, you know, I think they should have had Flurry with a, a more seasoned player than uh, Kulak, and I think it hurt him. But it also uh, shows that they had confidence in Kulak to put him with the rookie, yeah, and then why do you lose that I think confidence it's, it's so quite don't A little too much, you know, yeah. I, no, I, I, I think. But, no, I agree, you know, I agree, but it, it's, it's... They know what's going on. <laughs> I don't. But it doesn't, to me, I don't really know what confidence Claude Julien could have in Mike Riley because he hasn't really done much to gain the coach's confidence. Uh, you know, it would be interesting to see how much longer this is experiment having him in the lineup and not... Kulak, and maybe having, if you put him as a healthy scratch and put Kulak in, might be kind of a... It's like getting a root canal watching him. <laughs> yeah. Painful. It is, it is. So it could be a little bit of a wake-up call if he's in the in the press box and Kulak's out on the ice. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what the defense pairings are the next game, like whether they keep Sherratt with Weber and, P and who's on the third pairing. So it's going to be interesting to see moving forward, but, uh, you know, as you say, I think, I think they need to get Kulak back in the lineup sooner rather than later. And listen, Riley's probably a great guy. <laughs> a lot of hockey guys are great guys, but, you know, they're just not getting it done. It's nothing personal, Riley. Uh, the Canadians have five wins on the road compared to three at home. Why do you think they have a better road record so far? You know, I don't, it, it, this team at home, I don't think they've been real dangerous at home for the last few years. Yeah, they've had a above 500 record at home, but God, they give up some games at home. And uh, I guess part of it is a testament to the league and the parity. But, uh, you know, people, other teams come here and they get excited to play hockey. Mm -hmm. Yeah, ask, around the league, they always say, uh, what's the favorite place to play? Oh, Montreal, the atmosphere is great. So teams come in here, they want to win. They want to do well here. And, you know, I just, uh, and I know they have to too, but maybe it's a little pressure. Um, things don't go well, the power play like last year, the booze and everything. I, you know, they, they have to be more dangerous at home. But. They're good on the road. I like the road record. I think it's dealing with the construction, trying to get to the Bell Center from the South Shore. So they have a headache. They arrive at the Bell Center. They're stressed out because of the, the construction and the traffic they have to deal with. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I think it could also just be outside factors that you're on the road, you're together with the team, you're just focusing on the task at hand when Shea you're at Curry, home. maybe? <laughs> Perhaps. There's a and lot of that in the city. When they're, they're here in Montreal, they've got their families to deal with and things like that, that, it, that could be a, a factor when it comes to their home record. Well, sure. 
Sherrod mentioned when he signed here as a free agent, one of the reasons he did is the opportunity to play in the Bell Center 41 times a year instead of once. And he talked about how much he loved it when he was at Winnipeg, coming here in the atmosphere. And as Knuckles said, I think, I think guys feed off it. The concerning thing is how many teams come here and play their backup goalie and still win, mm, yeah. so it's, which is another concern. But I think, I think it's probably, I think they feed off the atmosphere. But I think the win against the Bruins could go a long way to giving the Canadians that boost at home. I mean, that was, that was an amazing <laughs> hockey game. That had everything. And there well, was times. It was fun to watch. You, yeah. There was times you figured the Habs were out of it, but the one thing about this team, they well, don't. Well, we be saying that they don't give if up. If they lost five to four, um, probably. But they, they, they've shown this season that they don't give up. I mean, look at the game yeah, in Vegas. Yeah. They've showed other times. This is a team that doesn't give up. And Sherrod talked about that after the game, saying it, it's you know he's a new guy in the room, and just the way they got, they keep playing the same way. When they're behind, they don't sort of tense up and, and forget. I mean, they had a bad game in Dallas. That's going to happen three games and four nights. But they're a team that competes, and I think they showed that last season. I think they've continued that this season also. Yeah, it's thrilling to watch them. I can't remember in the past 20 years a Habs team being this exciting. exciting. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, And just having that uh, never-say-die attitude. All right, that is the end of this week's edition of Hockey Inside Out. This week's show has been brought to you by Madison's New York Grill and Bar in downtown Montreal on Drummond Street. Cross from the Bell Center where you can wait out the traffic and enjoy their $10 specials after every Canadian's game. Okay, if you could choose one team to see the Habs face in the playoffs, which team would it be and why? Let us know in the comments section below. I'm Adam Susser, and I'll see you back here next Thursday.